Tripuri RS. I will be taking you through today's proceedings. A warm welcome to you all to the international faculty development sessions based on the NAC 7 criteria. We are on the seventh and the last day of the series. We have with us today, Sri Yes Sheshnar and Sir, Honorary Joint Secretary, Sheshadipuram Education Trust, Sir would be presiding over today's function. The topic for today is course review and mapping, an essence of academic audit. The resource person for the day is Professor Dechin Wangdi from Bhutan. Let us begin the session. I now request our principal, Professor Vidya Shivananava, to deliver the welcome address. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Happy noon to all of you. We have stepped into the last day of NAC criteria based seven days faculty development plan. Today, we are also having valedictory program in the same session. The topic for today's discussion is course review and mapping an essence of academic body. Course review helps in determining the learning objectives. It develops a self-assessment among teachers and assures the implementation of quality education. Keeping this in mind, the topic for today was decided. We have a Mr. Today, Sri S. Sheshanarayan, Honorary Joint Secretary, Sheshadritram Educational Trust, Bangalore. Sir took his bachelor degree in industrial and production engineering from the famous RV College of Engineering, Bangalore in 1994. Sir hails from a family of industrialists and social workers. His father, late Sri K.V. Srikantaya, was the first life trustee of Sheshadipuram Educational Trust. Sheshnarayan, sir, is an industrialist engaged in manufacture of pet bottles and containers. He is presently serving as chairman of Downing Council of Sheshadipuram Independent University College and Sheshadipuram Commerce College, Mankhi Road. Sir is Sir has been a life member of Indian Red Cross Society and few other service organizations. Sir takes keen interest in development of the all Shisharapram group of institutions. He also takes keen interest in value-added programs and helping all of us in guiding skill development programs to the Shisharapram degree colleges. Sir, on behalf of Shisharapram Institute of Commerce and Management, I extend a warm welcome to you. Thank you, madam. We have with us today the resource person for the day, Professor Dechin Wangdi, Assistant Professor, Jeddu College of Business Studies, Jeddu, Bhutan. Sir, on behalf of Sheshadipuram Educational Trust and Sheshadipuram Institute of Commerce and Management, I extend a warm welcome to you. Thank you, madam. Today is the last day of the session where we have all our resource persons who have joined us for this valedictory program. I welcome all the resource persons who have been giving us their expertise in the areas from the day one of the sessions of this program. Welcome to all the resource persons. I extend a warm welcome to all the members of Faculty Development Forum of SICM. Uh, Dilip Kumar Yadav, sir. Welcome, sir. Shilpa ma'am and Suresha B, sir. I extend a warm welcome to Amar H.A., sir, ITSC coordinator of Sheshadipuram Institute of Commerce and Management. I extend a warm welcome to all the research scholars, participants, faculty all over the view. Welcome to one and all. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, madam. On behalf of the gathering, I welcome you two to this session. Let me Thank take a minute. Let me take a minute to introduce the speaker for the day to the gathering. Professor Dechin Wangdi is a great academician with a rich expertise in the field of education. He has graduated from the American International University of Management and Technology, India. He has completed his MBA from Jawaharlal Nehru Technological University, Hyderabad, India. He is a proud select of Royal Civil Service Commission, Bhutan, during the year 2008, Professor Dechin Wangdi has served at various key positions. To name a few, he has been a program leader for the BBA course, 
He has been a Dean of Students Affairs and a coordinator for the marketing stream. He has also played a key role in formulating the teaching modules and its processes. He has guided various students in their research projects. Professor Wangdi has attended various professional training to get subject expertise and has designed an entrepreneurship model. Sir has the credit of editing the class 12 textbook of business and entrepreneurship. Professor Wangdi is a great researcher too. He has published many of his research papers at national and international levels. His area of interest are Bhutan nutrition and its impact on Bhutanese economy, the feasibility study for introducing master of business administration, consumer attitudes on FMCG. Professor Wangdi has conducted various trainings, workshops. He has trained the civil servants on individual work plans. Professor has also served in various capacities like, he is a member of the academic board, Jedu College of Business Studies. He has also served as a member of the examination board. A warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you, madam. The topic for today is course review and mapping, an essence of academic audit. Course mapping and review is an essential component of the teaching learning process. It is the be all and the end all of the, of the academics. The more detailed and meticulous is the course design, the richer would be the course outcome. Designing a course includes framing the objectives, instruction methodology, and the pattern of assessment, keeping in mind the diverse student community. Course mapping and review is an integral part of the course delivery. It helps faculties to pause and check whether we are accomplishing the ideal set by the course. It is an essential element of the academic audit its essence. Today, we have with us an eminent professor who has a rich experience in course designing, course implementation, and how its outcome can be measured, can be restructured to achieve its goal. Over to you, sir. You can begin the session now. Uh, sorry, uh, thank you, madam. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Uh, sorry, there was a small glitch, and I couldn't hear at last last part of your of your, uh, your your introduction and all. Anyways, thank you. It, it is a very very uh, big opportunity for me to speak in this kind of uh, international forum. And Shishesh Program Institute of uh, Commerce and Commerce and Management has given me this big opportunity, and I'm very grateful and thankful for. Uh, this uh, kind of opportunity. I would uh, like to definitely not forget and uh, wish, uh, I mean, welcome Madam uh, Vidya, Principal of uh, Shishesh Tapuram and uh, the Joint Secretary of uh, Educational Trust, uh, SICM. Uh, welcome to this uh, 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 and uh, All other members who are present here, I would like to welcome everyone uh, who is uh, presently uh, listening to this uh, program and uh, uh, I would like to go straight away with the, the presentation that we have for today. Yes, uh, today the topic that I would uh, like to discuss and the topic that I'm given to present is on course uh, review and mapping. Before that, uh, I would like to introduce a small introduction about Myself, I am Ashim I'm uh, currently teaching in Gate College of Business Studies. It, uh, the Gate College of Business Studies is under Royal University of Bhutan. And uh, let's go back to our slide. Uh, today, I'll definitely talk on course review and mapping, why it is important for ed educational institute like ours, and uh, why uh, education institute should focus on course review and mapping, and how should we should guide our students to, towards the right direction rather than. Uh, taking them towards the wrong direction. So, next, uh, a small uh, background and introduction about the college that I work. Uh, Gedu College of Business Studies is, uh, uh, is located at Gedu, in Chuka, under Chuka district. It's the only premier business college under Royal University of Bhutan uh, that offers full time contemporary business and management education in the country. The establishment of business college was first con uh, conceived by His Majesty the Food King of Bhutan. 
Therefore, the National Assembly members resolved to establish uh, one at the in the fifth session of Parliament uh, National Assembly. The Ket College of Business Studies located at the campus, which has uh, which was de actually developed by Tala Hydro Power uh, Project Authority. It was uh, made for Tala Hydro Electric Project Authority. Once it was completed, once the project was completed, then it was handed over to Gedu College of Business Studies. And then the, the business college became fully function, functional by 2008. Then the Royal University of Bhutan shifted the Faculty of Commerce and Student from the Sherapsi College that was used to the college used to offer business college and the, the part of business component had to be brought together College of Business Studies. And uh, the, by then the first uh, director of college was uh, Mr. Latu Jamba as the project director. He was he has asked to lay off the foundation and supervise the modification of existing infrastructure that Tala Hydro Electric uh, project was uh, has given to college. Subsequently, he took over the first uh, as the first director of the uh, of the Kid College of Business Studies. And uh, it is just around uh, 45 kilometers away from Indian border, actually, a uh, border named uh, Jaidan, where uh, we have, we share border with India. And if you like to visit, to visit Kid College of Business Studies, which is just 40 kilo, uh, 45 kilometers away from Indian border. Actually, it's just nearby, if you can realize that. Now, currently, we have uh, uh, Dr. Mer uh, Dr. Sonam Chetan as our, uh, our second president of the uh, college. Uh, he is the overall administrator, management and development of the college. She looks after everything. The college has uh, uh, 65 faculty, 70, more than 70 administrative staff, a total of 1,584 enrolled students as of now in 2020 to 2021. And uh, with this background, we'll move to the next slide. Uh, that is, uh, in this in slide, I would like to introduce and give an overview of who it would be, what it would be, uh, what is mapping, and why it is important uh, to map all Sorry? Uh, sorry, your voice was a little low. Oh, so sorry. I'll try to speak uh, louder then. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, now, with uh, with respect to this slide, I'll be talking on overview, overview of course, review and mapping. I'll try to introduce you to how, why course mapping and course review is important. Now, if I talk about mapping, course mapping, uh, maps are all around us actually, uh, on our phones, in our cars, in our public space, just about anywhere we find maps. Anywhere we want to go, we need uh, directions. And when we need direction, we look at uh, the maps that we have in our phones. We use, we use them to navigate traffic, uh, go on road uh, trips, illustrate concept, put simply, they just, uh, they show us the way from point A to point B, where you want to go from point A to point B by illustrating roads, traffic and terrains along uh, maps, display how to get somewhere, uh, get somewhere and what might happen along the way. Essentially map provide, us a, provide a high level of overview of new or unfamiliar territory, allowing us to journey safely and efficiently. So basically a map will teach a guide, a student and teacher on how we, are, we go about the course uh, from uh, starting to end, how we develop from objective till how we complete uh, when we reach to summative ass assessment and all like that. Designing a course can also present unfamiliar territory if you are creating one. If we are creating one uh, map for a course, we probably know where we, we, we want our student to end up. But uh, uh, we uh, might probably know where you, you student end up, but you might uh, not know how you, uh, we will get them there. So this uh, map will help us to take our student, guide our student from point A to point B. This is where a course map comes into play. Just a traditional map uh, identify a path through unfamiliar terrain. When we are using a map, when you are going to point B, suppose we are going from, we want to travel from Mumbai to Delhi, then obviously we will have to look into map. Likewise, a map will provide a, a clear picture of uh, where a student want to go from point A to point B. And uh, <clears throat> simply put, a uh, course map is an outline of uh, uh, our course, you may have heard the refer to a certain curriculum alignment of something similar, but whatever the case, uh, a course map identifies each of your, if each of our learning objectives, 
the objectives that we have, the kind of assessment that we will have, and, uh, and that we will use to prove the student understand the content and the instructional mat materials that we are going to use to uh, guide our student uh, through the right path. The student will use to prepare for those uh, assessments by putting these elements side by side, a course map illustrates what a student will do, consume and accomplish through throughout our, co uh, our courses. That's what uh, the overview of uh, course mapping talks about. And if I talk about course review as an uh, overview of course review, then uh, now for with respect to course review, on yearly basis, each semester, we have semester-wise and sometimes year-wise. And each semester, our faculty spends time creating and revising their courses. Every time the faculty or teaching staff is given a, a model to teach or, or a subject to teach. So for that purpose, our faculty will obviously revise and review the courses, uh, the particular course, uh, and uh, try to offer what is, uh, what is meant to be offered at the right point of time current times need, what is their current time of need. Courses revision is a fact of life in education. We have to, it's a fact, we can't deny that. We have to revise our course. We have to update our course based on the need and demand of the market. Revisions are more commonly just general updates, uh, like cosmetic changes, uh, like cosmetic changes, uh, moving dates, and updating uh, broken links that, are, that might have happened in the course, in between the course. A uh, true course revision looks at the pedagogy and structure of a course and it's a process that requires time and patience for a faculty. It takes time, it, it needs faculty's patience when, you, when we are revising or reviewing a course. Establishing a clear uh, set of steps in the revision process can reduce effort and time on tasks that we are involved in. Course revision can be made easier when the when a little planning and preparation and having a confidence to begin. When we have confidence and when we know where to begin, then the, uh, the planning and preparation becomes very easy for a faculty. With the help of process and some simple tools and strategies, faculty can be more effective in their teaching. When we have uh, revised, uh, revised our course, reviewed our course, and when we have updated everything with respect to the current needs of the organization, or, or any, any business entities, then we, we feel comfortable on offering the right kind of courses, right kind of model to us, our student. To accomplish this efficient, uh, efficient course revision relies on five, uh, particularly five step process like uh, set revision goals, what needs to be revised, review course structure. The course structures need to be reviewed sometimes because it is out of date sometimes. Sometimes maybe it is too futuristic for students. Then we have to align that uh, uh, course structure, content, and assignment, integrate student feedback. So when we are trying to update or review the course, uh, then obviously we have to take uh, student feedback. And uh, taking by the looking at the example of all, what we do is we do a tracer study where we'll try to connect with our uh, graduates uh, and who are employed in some of the companies, and we try to trace them and try to understand. Is, it, uh, is the course that we have offered to you being applicable to the job scenario and job market? And like things like that, we also try to uh, connect our students through alumni associations and all. And through that, we get uh, different kind of feedbacks. And uh, with, again, another process could be record reflections, the, re uh, uh, the records that we maintain when we teach on monthly basis and weekly basis, we maintain a record and we need to reflect that. How, how we taught in the past and how we are going to teach in the future. And the, uh, and the fundings uh, is also one of the important aspects of course review. We need fundings because without fundings that there can't be any research based on course review that needs to be done. The funding is very much important. And the observation and implementation revisions. These are the things that uh, we need to uh, look after while thinking of reviewing your course. And uh, in our case, uh, we, we, we do it uh, uh, four yearly, four years, we review every course and we we'll try to update our course. Uh, we, we talk, uh, all, the, all the faculty from different universities, teach, uh, colleges comes together and we discuss and we have something called fora where we meet, uh, uh, we call from uh, faculties from private colleges, we call uh, faculties from different uh, colleges and we, 
uh, call even stakeholders and we meet and we discuss on the revision of the course, how to review, how to go about while reviewing the course, what are the things that we need to update and what are the things that we need to delete. These are the things we actually discuss. So this is some kind of uh, ideas that I can share with you all. And uh, uh, of course, mapping, these are a few definitions given by different authors, according to Dr. Heidi Hayes, Jacobs, 1997 till 2010, clearly address the necessity to synthesize various models and create a framework that focuses on recommendation, requisites, and desires that affect student learning and teaching environment. So obviously, when we are talking about course mapping, we have to map, map in such a way that students know where to go and how what to study and what to learn. So they are provided a gist of idea or a picture so that they can understand what actually they are going to study when they enter into a class. So without that idea, if the students uh, get uh, go to the class without any idea of, about what the students will be taught and what the students will be learning, then the student is lost in the middle of the class. They don't know what to do. So basically this course map helps students to understand what will be taught, what will be, what is their main objective of the course and all. Then Hill 2008 defined curriculum mapping is not a spectator sport. It demands teachers ongoing preparation and active participation. So while mapping a course, it is teacher who is very much important takes up uh, proactive actions uh, where uh, you need it. Uh, faculty need to prepare a lot. There must also be a continual support from administrator who have a clear understanding, the insight into the integrities of the mapping processes. Because as a faculty, it is very difficult to do everything. You need support from administrative staff, where when you need materials, certain kind of materials, these are the materials being supported by administrative staff. Curriculum mapping is a learning process for the teacher and help them to take ownership of the curriculum. That's what is the simple definition given by different, different authors. And if you go to the next slide, we have importance of mapping, why we need map and why it is important. Balance between the current Mapping is important because it allows teachers and administrators to focus. I'll try to relax, sorry. Uh, the curriculum mapping is important because it allows teachers and administrators to focus on balance between the content across curriculum. It allows them to look into each classroom and see what children learn and helps them create, uh, gather data on reduction or uh, redundancy or gaps in the course on content. When we are trying to map a course, when faculty is trying to map, map a course, now what we are trying to do is actually, we are trying to look that if there is re redundancy, reputation in some areas that need to be deleted and uh, gaps, certain gaps that is being left that need to fill, fill in that gap in the course content. Curriculum mapping also helps teachers and administrator, administrators assess the structure of the course. It helps, uh, even the administrator as well as the faculty to structure a course in such a way that there is a smooth flow of uh, teaching and learning in the class uh, taking place in the class. And the time scale form of a when specific lesson or concepts are taught. The greatest benefit to curriculum mapping is it is abil its ability to improve the links between curriculum. It will try to link between curriculum. Now, how we go about what we teach in pre-primary school and then what we teach in uh, uh, middle secondary school, then higher secondary school, and then post higher secondary school. When you when students go to university, that curriculum needs to be aligned so that there is a cascading effect. Once certain concepts are being taught in pre-primary, then you go to second higher higher secondary school, secondary schools. Then you get the, the updated version of the better version of the defined version of what you are learning and where you are going. Uh, contents and skills have been addressed and what remains to be covered. Then we have next is ongoing development process. One important thing to remember, curriculum maps are never considered done because it needs to be updated every time and any time. They are an ongoing development seeking to improve students' learning and content quality across school. Every time, every semester, we need to develop, refine, redevelop our map because every time, we, we, are, we are living in fast developing world. 
uh, globalized world where development is happening very far. And if we start, if we get stuck with uh, older, older textbooks, then it's no way to help our students learn anything new. And we will be stuck there. So to update students and to update course, uh, course review, I mean, course mapping, to, to have a best course mapping, the teachers need to be updated. The teachers need to be trained on how to go about uh, developing or mapping a course. Uh, <clears throat> these are new classes and new school years. The content and the structure should be continually assessed and revised, if need be, to ensure students get the most out of their education and for teachers to use the most effective strategies in their lesson. So while teaching, you just uh, don't uh, update, you just don't uh, revise your, uh, your, your, your module, but rather you need, to, you need lots of materials like teaching uh, and learning is happening in the class. You need IT supports, you need lots of things to successfully complete uh, teaching a lesson. So these are the importance. We have another important, uh, some more importance that we can uh, discuss on. Another importance of mapping is design a roadmap for the course. It helps in designing a roadmap for the course. Good curriculum maps at the district follows a common format that enables educators to have conversations around effective teaching and increase transparency across grade levels and subject area. It helps uh, us in uh, making our model transparent to to the students with respect to any great levels and subject areas that needs to be stressed upon. The next uh, important uh, importance we have is determine, determine effective assessment that align with learning outcomes. Effective curriculum is planned backward from long term, desired result through and three stage decision uh, design processes, desired result, evidence, and learning plan. These are the key things that we need. We need to, to have a desired result, we need evidence and the learning plan that we formulate for our students. So weekly on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis, we plan what we are going to teach on a weekly basis. This week, what we are going to teach and next week, what we are going to teach. This is the plan that we have to have. This process helps avoid common problems such as uh, treating the textbook as the curriculum rather than a resource. So basically what is happening is most of the time faculties and teachers, they, uh, we, uh, we treat a textbook as curriculum rather than a resource, but rather we have to treat textbooks, reference articles and all as a resource rather than curriculum or activity oriented teaching in which no clear uh, priorities and purpose are appropriate. Then encouraging this uh, mapping will encourage communication and co collaboration am among faculty. So when we are mapping, we do not map uh, a module uh, single-handedly, whether rather we, we meet our meet with our faculty friends who teach same subject or same module, and we discuss and we get along and we work towards uh, mapping the course, how to go about and what are the things that we need to communicate uh, with respect to learning of the students. These are the importance, and there are many importance with respect to mapping, but uh, with the limited time that I have, I need to rush up because I'm still in the uh, slide six. So next slide we have is mapping processes. Now there are processes involved. We, we just don't map. We just directly don't go and directly write something else and start start stating that this is a map. Rather, we have the process that we need to follow while mapping a course. Process mapping is a graphical representation, with a illustrative description of how things get done. <clears throat> it helps the participant. It helps the participant to visualize the details of the process closely and guides decision making. One can identify the major areas of strength and weaknesses in the existing process, such that the contribution of individual step in the process. Further, it helps to reduce the cycle times and defe uh, defects in the process and enhance it, its productivity. Now, why we are mapping? Because we don't want to repeat again and again. Some topics might be repeated again and again. Now, when, if you don't want to, rip, uh, to uh, repeat topics happening again and again, what we can do is the mapping helps us do that. We don't want to repeat that uh, things. Now we'll go by uh, uh, go to the mapping process or steps that are there. First, we have program goals. Next uh, step is goals objective. Then we have instructional support materials. Then number four, formative goals. Number five, we have formative goals. Now, if you discuss one by one, you can go to first uh, step is to us 
mapping process is uh, program goal, right? Or identify program goals first, right? Uh, or identify the program goals that specifically relate to the course you are mapping. So when we are able to map a course, firstly, what we have to do is write and identify the program goals. What is the program goal? What is the main objective of the program? What is the program uh, goals that we have stated? These are the things that we have to keep in mind. Sometimes these program goals are written for you by an accreditation body or a curriculum team. This uh, program <coughs> goals might be set by accreditation committee or a curriculum, curriculum teams. And sometimes they need to return, uh, be written from scratch. Sometimes there won't be any program goals. So as a faculty, we need to sometimes write it from scratch, start from writing from scratch. So while doing this, we need to be sure and visit the Bloom's taxonomy and uh, writing effective learning objective uh, posts if the program goals are not yet written. So these are the two areas where we can visit and improve our uh, writing with, uh, or developing our program goals with respect to program goals. Uh, goals. So we must start with the end in the mind. When we are starting, we have to start uh, what is the end? What are the means that we will for use to reach to the end in, in the mind? Keeping that in the mind, we have to write this program goal. <clears throat> then next objective, uh, second step is we have course objective, write or identify. So next step, what we do is we identify uh, course or learning objectives. What is the learning objective uh, with respect to this particular course when we are mapping? Next, uh, we must uh, decide uh, what skills, knowledge, or attitude we want the students to achieve by the end of the end of the course. This is the question that we have to ask. What is the skills that we are trying to impart? Knowledge and attitudes that we are trying to impart to us, our student. Uh, this must align with the program goal, the program goal that we have set in the first uh, stage. In the case of the flower analogy, the stem is what fits the flower. The achievement of the course objective should provide students what they need to actually achieve the program goals. Now, obviously, student will look, uh, student wants something out of uh, when they are attending a class. They want something else. That's why they are attending class. They want, they want to know. Now, if they are attending a human resource uh, module, they want to know how human resource should be managed. These are the skills, some of the skills, knowledge, and attitudes that they need to learn. So with respect to that, uh, we should not forget what is the main purpose or objective uh, of, this, uh, uh, of this module and try to set an objective that fits students' needs and want. Instructional. to the program goal and try to understand what they are actually trying to do with this particular course. Once we have identified, uh, once, once we have identified, fight or return the course learning objective, we circle back to ensure alignment with the program goal. So there should be a cascading effect. There should be alignment. That's uh, what uh, the, the mapping process tell us. Then third step, instructional support materials. Then uh, while preparing a map, now third step, we have this instructional support material. We need to prepare instructional support material. Next, we can start to identify, gather and prepare the instructional mater materials that will assist in our instructional plans and help the student achieve the course objective. So what are the materials that we need while, while, while trying to teach and learn between students and faculties? This is the information student will need and might include the textbook open educational resources, videos, supplemental resources, learning objectives, software, or so web tools and others, any others like articles, anything that uh, materials that student need to learn with respect to a particular course. These are the things that we need to keep ready for, for better learning and understanding of the module. We are not yet considering the delivery of information, but simply the information that is needed so once this uh, process is completed, what we have to do is again we have to uh, support the circle. We have to circle back and ensure alignment with previous step, so that there is continuous flow, smooth flow. Because there, why we are doing this is because we don't want gap and redundancy repeating again and again. So that we have smooth flow of teaching and learning happening in any university. 
Then uh, fourth, we have formative course assessment, plan for formative course assessment. Uh, next, we need to identify the plan activities or assign assignments that will allow both uh, you and uh, your students to inform, uh, informally assess their achievement of the course object. Obviously, we need to assess our student. Is the learning happening or not? That's when we assess our student, we know that. If we do not assess our student, then we will never understand whether our students are learning or not. We need to assess our student. To assess that, we have something called formative course assessment. While the course is being offered, we formally, uh, uh, we formally assess, assess through assess student. Students should be allowed to test and test the waters before diving directly into the high stake exam. Before student enter into exam, final exam, student has to be assessed using formative assessment. So what can student do to check their own progress and allow you to ensure that, uh, ensure they are on their way to achieving the course objective before the summative assessment. Formative assessment are often, often informal, graded or ungraded. Sometimes it could be graded or sometimes it could be ungraded. Lowest activities and assignment that allows students to fail and try again without uh, detrimental consequences. This might include self-check quizzes. Some example of formative assessment is self-check quizzes, classroom activities, guided practice, independent activities as homework, or even simple pep, uh, partner pair share activities. So once this um, formative, uh, formative course assessment is complete, what we do is we can go back and ensure there is alignment with previous steps that are there in the, uh, in the mapping process. And final and fifth one, fifth and final one we have is submitted, uh, submitted course assessment. Plan for summative course assessment, step five. Next, uh, we need to identify and plan summative assessment that will allow us to formally assess student achievement of the course objective. Obviously, we need to uh, I mean, assess our student. We need to understand whether a student has learned something out of this or not. So these are the things uh, we should include in our map so that the student understand these are the things that are there that, to learn and uh, to complete this module. This is the time for a student to demonstrate their level of achievement. For this assessment, you will be able to collect data to aid in improving instructional design, instructional strategies, and ultimately student learning. This assessment are often formal, graded and ungraded. Higher stake activities, assignments, and exam that call on a student to demonstrate mastery of course objective. Example might include traditional exam where student come, all students come together and exams all is being prepared and they sit together and write exams and some research essays can be done, projects and more. Once this has been complete, once the final uh, step is complete, what we have to do is again, we have to circle back to ensure there is alignment with all previous steps that we had followed. This is why, uh, this is the, the, the process of uh, mapping when we are trying to map a course or module. Uh, these are the steps that we, this is the particular step, uh, step that we follow. And there are other steps that you can follow, but uh, normally what we do is we follow this step uh, for uh, mapping process in our, our university. Then we have uh, types of mapping. Diary map, uh, projected map, and concept map, and finally essential map. So we'll discuss one by one here. Uh, what is, what could be the possible meaning of diary map and all when we are mapping mapping a course? So diary map. What we do is we record monthly what is happening, what we is being taught, what are the materials that we actually use in the class. These are recorded on a monthly basis. A personal, personalized map recorded by an individual person that contains data reflecting what really took place within a month of learning and instruction. So as a faculty, we need to map or uh, keep this daily map record that what we are teaching, what we are going to, uh, what are the materials that we have used, uh, kind of topics that we have discussed in the class. So we keep a record to better understand when we are teaching next month, uh, next uh, month, we'll just uh, revisit and try to understand what are the things that we are taught next month. Okay, we, are, we don't want to repeat these uh, topics again. So this is, uh, these uh, topics are already being discussed and materials are already being used. So we don't want to use that again. So that's how we, why the dairy map is important while making a call. Uh, next we have is, uh, a map that has been created by an individual person for a district or a course 
actually an interesting part of this itinerary. Now, what we do is before mapping, uh, before mapping have mapping of the course happen. What we do is we project, we project uh, right, uh, right of uh, project and map where it helps uh, us uh, individual person for the discipline of course before actual yearly testing of this uh, uh, plan or happen uh, actually uh, actual happening. So that's what a projected map actually means. Then, uh, then we have next uh, map is consensus map, a uh, map designed by two or more educators. Where, when we are talking about consensus map, we're talking about where uh, two or more teachers come together and try to develop a, a course map for our students. Uh, more educated, wherein all designs uh, designers have come to agreement on the course learning based on standard and ser serve as a planned learning map, wherein all who teaches the course uses the co uh, consensus map as a foundation of his or her course learning and instruction. So what is happening in this consensus, uh, consensus map, map is, now what happens is uh, they come to, all the teachers who are teaching particular model comes together and, uh, and uh, then they, they discuss about the course, what to be offered, what are the materials that, are, uh, that the teachers are going to use, the faculties are going to use, and they plan in such a way, and they make the course and they come to consensus that everyone is going to use this particular uh, mapping to guide or uh, uh, to teach students or to help learning of the students. Flexibility in additional learning, length of learning, assessment, resources, and how learning is executed is up to the discretion of each teacher teaching the course and is reflected in his or her projected map that we have discussed earlier or a daily map that uh, a teacher maintains. Uh, then, uh, next topic we have is essential map. A map created via a team of educators, task force that is representative of the strict learning expectation. Uh, the essential map serves as the base instruction map wherein all who teach the course use the map to plan learning and create collaborative consensus map. So uh, this is a way we have one step ahead of uh, consensus map. So what is happening is uh, this instruction map wherein all who teaches the course, who are teaching same courses, uses the map to plan F, uh, learning and create, create collaborative consensus map uh, and or personal. There needs to be two or more, uh, more like schools or course offer to one. So there should be two or more schools who are offering same courses and these two schools should come together and try to map create an essential map. That's what he's talking about because there's uh, the, the different uh, schools might not uh, might be teaching differently. So they come together to come to the understanding and try to teach the same thing in uh, same thing actually. The next is why mapping, why it is important, uh, why mapping is important. It benefits all the students. When we talk about uh, how it benefits all the students is because once uh, once uh, the student knows knows that they are going to take this particular module, the more uh, when they look at the course map, they will have idea on what are the things that they, they will be taught, what are the materials that they have to download or look for, or what kind of uh, articles they have to read. They all they will know uh, what are the things that they are need to learn. So this actually helps in uh, the, the map helps helps the student in learning. And mapping is a communication tool. It communicates a uh, teacher idea on how to teach, go about module. It communicates to students, even the stakeholders, the parents will, will also be helped with respect, of, uh, with respect to mapping. The parents can understand what are the things that his or her child is going to study in the particular module. So it's, it acts as uh, one of the communication tool. Mapping is a planning tool. It gives us focus and target, uh, targets necessary information. We, how it helps in planning is because we, we, we don't uh, want our focus to be away. Uh, when we are teaching a particular module, it guides us, gives us in a, in a right direction where we want to go and what are the things that we need to teach. It talks to, it guides the faculty and model tutors, what are the things that needs to be taught, what are the things that are not covered yet. So basically it talks everything and guides the teacher to plan his or her her, her lecture effectively. Then promotes professionalism and te teaching creativeness. So basically it all, this also promotes professionalism and teaching creative, creativeness.
The way to curriculum mapping, number one, we have communication tools between subject teachers and grade levels. For parents, obviously, it helps to communicate uh, and uh, parents know what are the things his or her daughter or son is going to study. For a student, student will know what are the things that he or she needs to look up on, to look up to and try to find out what are the materials that the student needs. Then pedagogical tools for the teachers and their kids. It, it reminds teacher what are the materials that they need, what kind of uh, technologies a particular teacher needs to uh, uh, del deliberate on the module. These are the things it will help teachers and heads to take this decision upon. Because before teaching, everything should be ready, kept ready. So when there is a mapping, when teachers and heads of the institution look at the map, and then the teachers and head will understand that these are the uh, equipments that we need. These are the IT technologies that we need. These are some of the projectors that we need to deliver this particular module. So this helps in this making decision right at the right time. And for a special education teacher, obviously it helps uh, what are the materials and different kinds of materials. Obviously when you are talking about a special education, um, uh, when we are offering spe special education, we, we talk about special things that we need to deliver a particular module or course. And for the student, it's reputation, sorry. Uh, for seeing the instructional program, then what are the instructional program? The way forward for designing curriculum and staff development. Obviously, well, uh, for designing the curriculum and staff development. So certain point, uh, and we have to use different kind of technology. Some staff might not know uh, to use that kind of technology. So looking at the course mapping, uh, if there is new technology coming into teaching and learning, obviously the staff needs to be developed, trained. So with respect to that, when we have a, a map, course map, it helps us in developing the course, uh, I mean, uh, uh, think of staff development as well. So these are the curriculum advantages that we have. Now, if I shift uh, towards e-learning and how uh, Kedu College of Business Studies uh, shifted towards e-learning because of uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic that uh, has affected all around the world. And uh, Bhutan was also not left behind by this pandemic. Everyone in Bhutan as well was affected. And uh, because of that, we had to shift our teaching and learning process uh, towards online learning, e-learning. Uh, the college has been using educational technology that we use uh, since 2012, mainly to facilitate technology uh, mediated learning activities activities in addition to usual face-to-face -face classroom method. With directives from government, all schools and education institutes were closed on 18th March 2020 as precautionary measure against COVID-19 development has made the college to go teaching completely online. <clears throat> so by 18th March, we are asked to close the college and send all the students to home because the, the, the disease was spreading very fast and it was very, very, very risky for the student to stay at home college. So we had to send all the students uh, to, to the, their, their respective homes. So when this happened, obviously we had to shift our, our teaching and learning to e-learning because before that, the teaching and learning was face-to-face. -face. So apart from really tutors are, are to use other means of content delivery, such as Zoom, Cloud Meeting, and Hangouts. The college has recognized that online environment is important for inter independent learning. So we understood that it is important that we incorporate uh, online learning as well. And uh, this helps in independent learning for students. And VLE tools have been more useful as students do not have conventional classroom. Thus, ICT section integrated additional features such as Zoom, interactive content, content H5P, and, uh, and big blue buttons into VLE. Within such online space, students can interact and engage with friends. The tutor and learning resources. The uh, tutor also uses alternatives such as social networking apps to reach out the information to students. Not just, uh, we, just we didn't just use VLE or Zoom or Hangouts and all. We had to use uh, social media apps like WhatsApp, Facebook to communicate uh, to our students. Sometimes we had to, uh, we, we created a group where we could communicate with our students personally. Uh, section wise, class wise, uh, group created, uh, we created a group in WeChat and WhatsApp and all. Uh, what's up and all, and we try to we started communicating what are the things to be done in the class and what are the assignments that the student has to do. So we, it was it was at first it was difficult, but as the time passed and we months went, we started getting used to it and we started 
uh, in the uh, current pandemic situation. And uh, what were the what are the positive impacts of e-learning? These are uh, the, the, the articles I got it from some articles, uh, and to, uh, I'll try to relate it to myself. The positive impact of e-learning on student achievement and learning has been recognized by many, many researchers. Some of the authors are as follows. According to NORA 2009, association with instructional technology enhances learning and will become self-directed learners. So actually e-learners, I mean, electronic, when we use electronic uh, mode to learn, then it helps the students to become self-learner. That's what uh, NORA has to say. Then Al Al Fadai uh, 2009 emphasized the benefit of e-learning at higher education institution in terms of promoting independent learning, better learning quality, ease of teaching process and flexibility. Because students start using uh, technology, they'll start learning themselves. And it actually becomes easier for, easier for teaching teachers to uh, teachers while delivering a particular module. Yet the success of e-learning program depends on three qualities. So he has stressed that it depends on three qualities like system, information, and instruction. instruction. Kim, Trimi, Park, and JE 2012. Olson and Coded also had done some research and they found out that Michigan's, Michigan State University a shift of pedagogy from teacher center to more learner center approach, positive effect, effects to on economic growth due to um, civil overs of technology and knowledge. The societal impact in terms of potentially reduce the gap in access to education through, uh, though they are, may have digital uh, divide. So these are the research people have done and the positive impact it has, uh, the e-learning has to us, our student, and as well as, uh, not just student, as well as teachers. Also. Then e-learning at a glance at GCBS at our college, at GCBS to maximize the challenge, challenges and for timely integration, the tutors are request, uh, re uh, required to submit a weekly report reflecting online activities and that every week teachers were asked to submit a report how the teaching online teaching went and how teaching and learning happened in online. So participation of students and any related issues, even issues were deliberated and discussed on while trying to teach a student online through virtual, uh, virtually. Analyzing the VLE report stats for a semester and the VLE report, Moodle report was uh, analyzed and found out, uh, we tried to find out the stats, how the teacher has used and how many teacher has used and how student has used as does. A drastic increase in usage rate in terms of updating learning material assessment discussion happened is observed particularly after closure of the college 19th of March 2020. Because of pandemic, students were let go by 18th of March 2020. By 19th of March, we could see, we could found it, it found out, we did some research and we found out that by 19th of March, the usage of uh, uh, the VLE model increased drastically. The statistics indicated that tutors are leading in terms of using VLE to facilitate online teaching and learning. That was the finding that we had. Then uh, maybe we, maybe I have, uh, uh, my time is very much limited. I will skip this because uh, these are the tutors perspective that we had and student perspective that we had. And obviously there are challenges of e-learning. There was challenges, challenges of uh, e-learning. Accessibility was one of the challenges that we had. Uh, when, when everyone started using the internet, uh, then obviously the system went down. Uh, the VLE, when, when every student, uh, more than 1,500 students started using one, uh, one server to, to connect to the VLE module, it was very difficult. Network coverage, coverage and connectivity was an uh, issue. Internet connection and network coverage was pointed out to be the most serious issue of e-learning by both faculty and mem fam faculty members and students. And course incurred on online teaching and learning is observed to be another problem for both faculty members and students. However, the problem is found more severe with the students because students have challenges because uh, they are restricted of their pocket money, that money that they have, and the amount of the, the spendability power that the students have. There is no need to explore what strategies, strategies to reach the lesson to then and engage them fruitfully with uh, less financial burden than that. This is the understanding that we have. 
So there is a marginal increase in faculty workload with the online teaching and learning scheme in many places. Student workload have increased significantly as a result of unregulated assignment or works and extended learning activities across the model because of online teaching and learning. This happened. These were the challenges that we had. And uh, so what are the best uh, possible best, uh, best practices in developing countries? Uh, Algeria, what happened was international project support with the help of international project support, develop and implemented uh, the program to address the issue of infusing technology into education system. It was learned that teacher is the key to success in e-learning. So to have a success in e-learning, teacher play a key role. That's what it says. states in Lebanon, again, with the international project support, training in service teachers on both how to use and how to reach with technology was uh, focused. And looking at Pakistan, the never that we have, with support from international project, and it was focused on pre-service teacher education, upgrade skills of teacher educators, standardization of curricula, upgrade infrastructure. So they focus on upgrading teachers and infrastructure. Then looking at Chile national ICT program as a part of education reform program, two key strategies were used: teacher training and building national infrastructure support system. Now, if you look at Malaysia as a part of government vision 2020, 2020, a number of ICT initiatives have been implemented, including Martin Smart School. So these are the uh, uh, countries that are trying to incorporate some of the technologies uh, in, with respect to teaching and learning. And uh, finally, thank you. I've, I hope I did uh, justice to Justice to the topic, and uh, I would like to thank, definitely thank Shishesh the Program Institute of Commerce and Management for this wonderful opportunity to share some of the ideas about with respect to cost, cost review and mapping, and some of the challenges and advantages that we had with respect to pandemic, uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much, sir. It was an informative session. Uh, we had a good explanation about the course mapping process, end goal to be achieved, skill sets to be attained by the students, assessment pattern, its importance, formative and summative assessment, its types, and the benefits what students and other stakeholders can get out of the course. Thank you very much. Now it is time for the QA session. It's interaction time. Participants can post your questions in the chat box if you have any. Dear participants, if you have any queries, please put it in the chat box. So it looks like there are no questions. We'll proceed with the further proceedings. Thank On you, behalf of the college and the gathering, I extend my sincere thanks to the speaker of the day, Professor Dei Chin Wangdi, for being one of the resource persons of the seven day FDP program. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let us now proceed with the valedictory session of the seven day international faculty development program based on NAC criteria. I welcome you all once again to the valedictory session. Moving on, I now call upon Assistant Professor Shilpa C.S. to summarize the seven-day faculty development program sessions. Over to you, Shilpa, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, you are not at Am I audible now, ma'am? Yes, yes, Shilpa, you are audible. You can continue. Hello, ma'am. Yes, yes, you are audible, Shilpa. You can continue.
Hello, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, Silva, ma'am. You are audible. You can continue. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes. I, uh, Shilpa, Assistant Professor in Commerce and Management. I take this opportunity to read the report on NAC Criteria-Based International Faculty Development Program. The inaugural ceremony of the International Faculty Development Program began on 21st August 2021 at 12 noon with formal welcome of the gathering by Principal Professor Vidya Shivanavar. The keynote address of the seven-day faculty development program was rendered by Naruja Dr. Odepi Krishna, Honorary General Secretary, Sheshavpuram Educational Trust, followed by presidential remarks by W.D. Arshok, Trustee, Sheshavpuram Educational Trust. Inaugural session folded up with oath of thanks, which gave rise to the deliberations to be conducted for a complete week. Daywise report of the sessions, in brief, is read out with pride of meeting the outcomes as desired at the time of talking out the program. We are grateful. We are grateful to inform that the total registrations are 928, with an average attendance of 250 in Zoom on daily basis, followed by in your the main of the sessions being day one energy management and opportunity to minimize the excess use of energy. The resource person of the session was Mr. Abhishek Nath, Sector Head, Energy and Power, C-STEP. The resource person gave valuable insights about energy savings and conserving power at educational institutions. The main objective of the session was resource conservation, climate protection, and cost savings at workplace. He stressed upon conducting energy audit at workplace and described various kinds of energy audit like preliminary audit, targeted audit, and detailed energy audit. He also focused on he also focused on various phases of energy audit implementation and follow-up of post audit phase. Coming to the data, the topic of the session was teaching to learn balancing diverse learning needs. The resource person was Professor Raghutamaram Kashi, Chairman, Sikh Foundation, Bangalore. The resource person touched upon the necessities for openness in the mind to ensure learning attitude and also suggested the faculties around the globe to keep their mind young to allow thoughts to flow and to create fresh ideologies. The speaker further stressed on the fact that Experiential learning in different forms has to be adopted by the faculties to ensure that the learning is survived in the minds of the students for a very long period of time. Coming to day three, the topic of the session was implementation of policies in higher educational institutions and effort to convert Asia into practice. The resource person of the session was Professor Dr. Chinaya Anmalagan. Professor in Accounting and Research Advisor, Samara University, Ethiopia, East Africa. The resource person gave a beautiful insight on impact, implement, implications, and applications of new education policy 2020, and also advised the educational institutions to be very cautious while drafting the policies, keeping in mind the possibility of the implementation based on the available resources. The speaker also added on the need mm -hmm. for policies and the universal standards in teaching profession. The day two session was, sorry, the day four session was on long journals, threat to recognition of research. The resource person of the session was Dr. Ponmurgan Karupaya, research associate, King South University, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The resource person spoke about threats that are expected to happen basically in pure sciences. In case of the research papers are published in clown journals, he also stressed upon identification methods of originality of journals. Also informed that in case of the paper is accepted quickly, it is mandatory on the part of the faculty to recheck the authenticity of journals and the original journals are peer-reviewed and will take good amount of time to publish. 
the day fifth topic of the session was future role of teachers sustain pedagogical innovation in digital infrastructure the resource person of the session was dr shrinath tk associate professor cms business school jain group of institutions the resource person spoke about the challenges of the future in the profession of teaching and also insisted that mentoring is the essential piece to reach great heights in terms of offering sufficient suggestion to the student community the speaker gave references of epics and great saying by personalities and connected to the modern day teaching pedagogy kept the session interesting by sharing his experiences in the long journey of 3 and a half decades of teaching the day six topic of the session was case studies extensive experiential learning needs the resource person was dr mrs m kulkawa principal and head pg and research department of commerce the quid millet college for men chennai the resource person spoke in depth about the role of case studies as a pedagogical framework in planning of the curriculum by considering the coverage of the four facts of experience experiment reflect and conceptualize as a base for learning which is covered in the case based teaching the speaker highlighted the role of the teachers in preparing and justifying case to the students in proper manner and gave references of great academicians with relevant statistics to meet the underlying objects of session the day seven session the topic of the day seven session was the course review and mapping and essence of academic audit the resource person of the session is professor denshin mandi assistant professor jedu college of business studies jedu bhutan the resource person spoke about the importance of understanding the learning outcome to both facilitators and students of any subject and course necessity of the flexibility in the course mapping was stressed on as we are in the fast changing world the speaker highlighted the weekly analysis of course design in terms of the progress as to be need of the art to avoid duplication and reach the learning outcomes the stage of learning outcome to formation of assessment was deliberated in depth by the speaker to achieve the desired objectives of the session i would like to end with taking the positive side of the pandemic this has given a platform for international exchange programs for helping faculty to build a strong network beyond the universities and also countries the learning of each and every activity of educational institutions and universities are shared across the globe which caters to the needs of developing holistic education with common objective to live and let others live principle thank you over to you bhuvanama thank you madam moving on now i request shri yes sheshnarayana sir honorary general honorary joint secretary sheshadripuram education trust to render the presidential remarks over to you sir Yeah. Good afternoon, all. You are able to hear me? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yeah. Uh, respected uh, resource person for the day, Professor Denchin Wangdi from Bhutan, Principal of SSCM, Professor Vidya Shivanavar, staff of SSCM, and dear participants, a very warm good afternoon to one and all. Definitely, I would not let, uh, like to take much time of yours because it's already afternoon here in India, and even I am feeling very hungry. right i take this opportunity to congratulate sacm for conducting this international webinar friends it is a must to continuously update in the evolving the evolving methods and upgrade our knowledge to keep ourselves effective in the system as teachers in ug and pg it is mandatory to know new informations and rules framed by various governing bodies of the educational department i am sure this international webinar conducted for 7 days on various criteria relating to nac is very useful to all the participants 
I once again congratulate the principal and staff and those members who have put so much of efforts to conduct this webinar in this wonderful way. Thank you one and all. Thank you, sir. A note to all the participants, the feedback link for today's session is shared, will be shared in the chat box. The overall feedback form link will be sent to your registered mail IDs. The e-certificates will be received on its submission. Please note, it may take uh, some, somewhat about 10 days of duration. Uh, concluding, truly the week-long faculty development program was a great takeaway for all of us. It is now time to conclude and express our gratitude. I now call upon Assistant Professor Suresha B to propose vote of thanks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Bonana. Good afternoon. I have the honor to presenting the oath of thanks. First and foremost, my heartfelt thanks to Nadoja, Dr. Udepi Krishna, sir, Honorary Secretary, Sheshadripuram Educational Trust, for inaugurating. NAC criteria based seven days virtual international faculty development program and being a source of guidance throughout the program. Thank you, sir. I would extend my thanks to Sri S. Seshanarana, sir, Honorary Joint Secretary, Sheshadripuram Educational Trust, for presiding over the today's valedictory session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I extend my sincere gratitude to W.D. Ashok sir and R.B. Bhutanjaya sir, trustees, Sheshadripuram Educational Trust for being with us throughout the sessions. Thank you, sir. I thank our beloved principal, Professor Vidya Shivanavar, madam, for her constant support and guidance. Thank you, madam. My heartfelt thanks to all the resource persons who have shared their thoughts and knowledge in these seven days international faculty development program. Thank you all. My heartfelt thanks to the heads of various departments, technical team, session in charge, and the faculty fraternity for their valuable contribution towards the event. Thank you all. I thank Professor Dilip Kumar Yadav, sir, convener, and Assistant Professor Shilpa C.S. Associate Professor Amar H.A., IQSC Coordinator, for their support and elegant planning execution of the seven days virtual international faculty development program. Thank you all. But last but not the least, I thank all the professors, research scholars, and participants present at the program for their time and patient listening. Thank you, one and all. Over to you, Bona, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for your cooperation. Thank you, one and all. Madam, with your permission, yeah. can you Yes. Uh, I would just like to thank all the participants uh, who have joined us. Uh, some of the participants' names, we they see the names daily. So it, is, it has been like uh, uh, they are from our campuses only. So I thank all of them. Uh, I thank the today's resource person also who had given an extensive uh, expertise of this in uh, course review. And all the seven days you all have joined us on time. You have contributed for uh, the success of our faculty development program. So I would like to thank all the participants and all the resource persons of seven days. And a great thanks to uh, Shishak from Educational Trust for providing us this uh, uh, kind of uh, platforms to uh, do the programs and my sincere thanks to my staff members uh, uh, maybe to Shilpa ma'am uh, Boneshwari ma'am, Bharat sir uh, uh, Pramod sir, Dilip sir, Suresh Abhi sir, so all of you if I have missed any out of any of your names, uh, kindly excuse me it's a teamwork and this teamwork has really brought results today 
I hope all the participants have uh, taken a lot of information from this uh, seven days uh, uh, workshop. Thank you, thank you, one and all. If any kind of glitches we had at the time of organizing the uh, seven days uh, uh, webinar, if you had any inconvenience, we regret for those inconveniences, and we will see in future will be better than what we were today. Thank you, thank you, one and all. Thank you, ma'am. You can end. Thank you, ma'am. With your permission, we are going to end the session now. Dilip, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir.